It has been almost 10 years since the stunning new Acropolis Museum in Athens, Greece opened its doors. It's won accolades and seen plenty of visitors, but so far it has not achieved what many see as its primary mission, the return of several ancient statues known as the Elgin or Parthenon marbles. Dimitrios Pandermalis is president of the Acropolis Museum, and we're pleased to welcome him back to our studio for more on the museum and its repatriation efforts. It's so good to see you again. It is a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for making a return trip. Let's just bring everybody up to speed on what you're all about. Sheldon, if you would, some of the background. We mentioned it's been almost 10 years since the museum opened. It was actually June of 2009. There are 150,000 square feet of exhibition space. The museum is located 300 meters southeast of the Parthenon. 1.6 million plus visitors from June of 2017 to May of 2018. That's a 13% increase over the previous year. That is the good news. 850,000 plus virtual visitors from June 2017 to May 2018. And let's continue. It's ranked eighth in TripAdvisor's Traveler's Choice Awards Top 25 Museums for 2017. The International Institute for Conservation's Keck Award in 2012 for conservation of the Karatids. The American Institute of Architects Institute Honor Award for Architecture in 2011. The British Guild of Travel Writers Award for Best Worldwide Tourism Project for 2010. And without further ado, you want to show some pictures? Let's bring these shots up while we're at it, shall we? Here's the Acropolis Museum. Look what a magnificent structure it is. That's the obviously establishing outside shot. And then let's check the next shot out as well. It's just a stunning vista, beautiful location. And before you get to talk in 2018, we're going to remind everybody what you said when you were here in this studio in 2010. Okay? Go ahead, Sheldon, roll it. Let me make a comment uh, because many people think uh, that this museum is constructed for pieces for art pieces, uh, uh, they are missing. They are not in Athens. This is not true. This is the first time that we present a complete Acropolis, the Acropolis and the slopes of the Acropolis and the private houses around the Acropolis. Uh, we have uh, a lot of masterpieces in the museum and of course we are missing some pieces in the third floor, as you correctly said. These are uh, the Parthenon uh, uh, sculpture. Eight years later, do you think you have overcome the perception that this museum was built mostly to get back those marbles? No, I insist uh, to what I said uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the museum uh, has to present uh, the total of the Acropolis. So uh, uh, it is not so well known to most of the visitors that uh, practically we possess uh, very precious uh, art pieces from two Acropolises. We know the classical Acropolis, the Acropolis of Pericles. Mm -hmm. But before this Acropolis, we had another Acropolis, uh, another series of buildings. They were destroyed by the Persians 480 BC. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ruins of the buildings and the, all the statues were buried uh, uh, on the top of the Acropolis and were discovered uh, only in the late 19th century. So you have those relics as well from 2,500 years ago? Yes. I do want to, you'll understand that I want to ask you about the marbles, of course. They are still in the British Museum in London, England. How did that museum take possession of them in the first place? You know, uh, so the story of the maps is a long story. It started in the late, uh, in the early 19th century. It's not a matter of uh, a simple return of a cultural uh, uh, creation. Uh, the the Parthenon maps are practically divided. They are first of all divided between Athens and London, the, uh, half of the pieces are in Athens, half in London, but also uh, particular figures, images. It is uh, a little uh, surrealistic that uh, we possess uh, uh, a head of a figure and the body of the figure is in London. Or we possess uh, the front of uh, a warrior or of a rider and uh, uh, 
uh, the, the Beck is in London. Uh, we possess half of the Poseidon, the god Poseidon, hmm. and the other half uh, is in London. Somebody uh, once made the comparison that can you imagine the statue of David, the head in Florence, and you know an arm in another place. Uh, you have a foot. They have the slingshot. It just uh, you, you can see how silly that is. Uh, unfortunately, the way that uh, the team of Lord Elgin uh, uh, removed uh, this species was not uh, appropriate. I mean, uh, to cut pieces, uh, to cut uh, marble blocks in two pieces, or to take uh, the front uh, with the sculpture and leave back. Uh, the other piece of the marble is really unbelievable that it was happened uh... this way. We just saw a shot of Lord Elgin, and I want to ask you about more modern day British officials who said a decade ago we can't return the Elgin marbles to Greece because we're not sure that Greek officials have the skill to take care of them. Uh, it, that is no longer the case, presumably, if it ever was. Is that right? We can prove, we could prove internationally that uh, we are very, uh, we made uh, a huge progress in uh, restoration. And uh, I think uh, our restorators are internationally top uh, today. If that's well, the case, then what well, is the explanation for Britain not returning these objects today? They accept. Uh, accepted that uh, the conditions in, the, in our museum is excellent, and I appreciate that, mm -hmm. uh, that it is uh, their uh, ownership uh, right. So we possess it and we don't give back. Uh, I'm going to ask our director, can you roll this next clip, please, Sheldon, bottom of page two. Here's the Acropolis Museum. Why don't you take us through this, Mr. Pandemalis, and tell us what we're looking at here. This is the Grand Hall? This is the, the West Frieze of the Pathron, and this, this is the, the East Frieze. Uh, uh, our target uh, was uh, to make uh, clear to visitors how uh, uh, today could uh, be seen uh, pattern sculpture as a total. I mean, what we need is uh, that uh, uh, many people around the world uh, realize uh, this, uh, this issue, this problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we made uh, this problem from uh, oral, uh, we made it visual in the Acropolis Museum, and people can really enjoy what it is, uh, expecting or creating the expectation that one day uh, the copies we present in our museum will be replaced uh, by the originals fr from London. Of course, uh, I think uh, I, I can understand uh, the other side, and uh, I would say uh, no museum's director gives back uh, anything. Uh, this is, I would say, human. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, in the next step, we have to, to think uh, what is the reason for, the, uh, for claiming back uh, these pieces. Uh, the reason is only one, to complete uh, this uh, crucial monument in, uh, in human history. Uh, I, I think it's really so that uh, for the first time we have uh, on the path of Nofris the presentation of, uh, uh, of a society, of a real society in the world, and that uh, uh, all the process for the creating uh, the Parthenon building and the Parthenon sculpture was, for the fir first time in history, a real uh, democratic uh, process. Mm. I gather Amal Clooney is involved in your case as well. Can you describe that? Uh, this is a little uh, complicated with the legal issue. I think it's uh, more a moral issue. Of course, you can say what means moral today. Uh, it means something. <laughs> you have had, as we suggested off the top, uh, more than 12 and a half million visitors to date, which is a lot, but it is below your expectations. Uh, ha has the lack of having the Elgin marbles there 
hurt your attendance figures, do you think? Today, the museum is uh, crowded. Uh, we have uh, uh, per day uh, six uh, to 7,000 uh, visitors. Uh, but I'm told you expected two million a year. It hasn't been two million a year. Okay. But uh, I'm just, I'm not asking it to be a smart ass. I'm asking it because do you think not having the Elgin marbles has kept your attendance figures lower than they might have been? Uh, I, I, I'm sure that uh, we'll have uh, uh, an increase of uh, the visitor numbers if uh, this uh, should ha happen. I mean, it is uh, uh, the whole process, uh, uh, you know, the reunification is not a, a so simple uh, process. It will last uh, some years, and I think uh, if uh, it could happen, that uh, we, have, we have to do that uh, at the front of the visitors. Mm -hmm. It's a, a huge event, and uh, I'm trying, I'm, I like to go back uh, to the relationship uh, to the British Museum. The museum has a good relationship uh, uh, with the British Museum uh, because both uh, think that uh, we have uh, to promote uh, the knowledge about the quality of the maps. The difficult point is the reunification. Mm -hmm. I want to read something that has to do with the politics between Greece, the European Union, and Great Britain. So stand by. This is from The Guardian. Greeks continue to care deeply, and Brexit has provided an opportunity for their government to exercise some pressure. After all, the UK government will need approval from all European Union member states if a Brexit deal is reached. Rather cannily, last month, Greece's then culture minister, Lydia Coniordou, sent a letter to Jeremy Wright, Britain's culture secretary, requesting the opening of negotiations regarding the marbles. It's ironic that at a time when Brexit has revived the sort of jingoistic imperialism that turns many a Remainer's stomach, such symbols of British cultural chauvinism should be questioned. Let us talk brass knuckles politics here. Would Greece stand in the way of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union if the marbles are not returned? It is uh, difficult to say that uh, uh, they don't have uh, now the right to keep the pieces. If, as if earlier, as, as members of the United uh, Europe, they could keep the, 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 the pieces. I mean, it is an independent uh, question, and uh, I don't know, perhaps the politicians know more than I know. Uh, for me, uh, it is, uh, as uh, I told you, uh, a very, very deep uh, moral uh, question for, for the for them arms. If, if we say that Parthenon is a symbolic monument, if we accept that we have uh, the perfect uh, sculptures in human history, to, to keep uh, divided, it is so uh, uh, unbelievable for me. I understand that it's a symbolic and moral argument for you. The other side argues, the Louvre, the British Museum, the Metropolitan Museum, they argue that they are the cultural repositories of the whole world, and that taking any pieces away from them uh, adversely uh, has an impact on their reputation internationally. Is that a fair argument? No, it's, uh, we don't speak about repatriation for everything, hmm. which was removed in different periods of history. We speak uh, only uh, about a very specific monument for a very specific case. I can understand that it is not re uh, really easy to, to accept it, but this is the reality. You think it might be uh, good public relations for Britain to do it as well? Yes. It would be? Yes, it is a, a gesture of, 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 Generosity. of cu cultural, uh, uh, extra cultural behaviors. Hmm. Well, it's not like they've never returned anything before, right? The British Museum did return some of the antiquities that were looted from Iraq. 
during the U.S. invasion. Mm. They have returned some of those pieces, not the Elgin marbles, but some of those pieces. What do you read into that? Uh, there are, again, different cases. It's uh, a different thing if you can prove uh, uh, that uh, in, in recent times something was removed uh, or, for example, uh, uh, through something came through illicit trade uh, in a North European or American museum and uh, you excavate and you find uh, another part which fits uh, with what is uh, now abroad. Uh, so uh, you, 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 you sent uh, so special authorities and you can demand this and then uh, of course we have many returns. Mm. The Italians got a lot of things and uh, Greece got a lot of things of different museums around the world. But this is a, a modern uh, criminal process, mm. uh, illegal and illicit. But uh, what happened in history is more complicated. Mr. Pandabalis, we are grateful for your visit here at TVO tonight, and thank you very much for sharing your views. Thank you very much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.